Are you a believer? Hafadeh, I'm Nick Delgado. Welcome to another edition of Tatamona Tales on the KLM Podcast Network. Joining us from the Sagan Katuin tomorrow uh, place here is Johnny. <laughs> Wait, that's your Tatamona name. Go ahead, tell him. Uh, my name is Matinga, and he means the deep ocean. And um, <clears throat> that's my, my tomorrow name. But many my know name. him as? Johnny Cake. Johnny Cake Seguenza, half a day. Half a day. So tell us, um, how obviously you grew up and the culture, just upbringing, you hear stories of Tata Mona. Yes. You had your own experience? Yeah, sure, I have. <clears throat> it's in here. It's All of this part. artifact you see here is my experience with my Tata Mona people and everything. I believed in it. My grandmother's been telling me about my Tata Mona, the Tata Mona. Tata Mona means the people before us. Mm -hmm. It's nothing to be scared about. They're not spooky or nothing like that. But we hear a story about what the Tatamona can do. They can, they can make you get lost in the jungle. You can get sick by them. Uh, uh, if you don't show respect, something may happen to you. Mm -hmm. You know, And that's our true belief. Our true belief is respecting one another. You know, My grandmother always tell my dad to respect the jungle. And when you go in the jungle, ask permission mm -hmm. to whatever you're going to do. Because the Tatamona, the people, for, you know, our Tatamona people didn't live their life, fully developed their life, you know what I'm saying? When the Spaniards came in here, they were destroyed, they were genocided. I believe that their spirits are still hanging around here and everything. That's my belief, all right? Because things happen, you know, so we can see it when you get sick, Mm -hmm. You know, and, and there's not a doctor or a Syriana or a Syriana at times cannot heal the doings of our ancestors, mm -hmm. which we, who we call Totomona. You know, the people before us, thousands yeah. of years ago. I have my artifacts that are dated back as far as 3,500 BC. Wow, that's incredible. And yeah. so, uh, Mr. Sequenza, what was, tell us one experience that you had or, or encountered growing up. Growing up, well, you know, I, I uh, <clears throat> actually when I was growing up, I hear a lot of stories about the Tautomana yeah. by my grandmother and stuff like that. I never experienced nothing by them until one one night they they kind of like woke me up about the artifacts and stuff like that. They say, you know, famata, famata, famata. You hear this? I hear these things, like telepathically. Were you sleeping? Yeah, I was sleeping. Mm -hmm. And I woke up, actually when I woke up, I drove all the way down to my top end, not knowing. When I woke up, I, did, I didn't know how I, the hell I got down there. That was my first experience. I woke up 10 feet away, sleeping on the sand, on the ground, and my truck was still on. And the first thing that was I saw and was given to was this was what I got. This is an artifact that belongs to our Tomana people back then. Mm -hmm. After that, I, I uh, entertained it. I knew I had to cleanse my body, which I did. I did my four-day fasting, no food, no water, and everything. So the only way I can get close to my spiritual world, which is our Totomona spirit, was to do my cleansing. What does that consist of? Because I'm thinking, I'm still kind of stuck in the part where you're hearing the whispers in your sleep, and then you're yeah. waking up yes. to, to that message. Uh, uh, it's like they gave you, gave you a gift. Yeah, this was the gift. What and was I, going through your mind and all that when you woke well, up? When it was going through my mind, yeah, I, I was wondering why I was down there. And, and, you know, I didn't know why I was down there. And when I woke up, this was right there next to me. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this, you know, I believe, because you can see how it, and everything is. This is the very first, uh, 30 some odd years ago, I've been wearing this thing. Don't take it on to change my, the rope. And when I got this, I, uh, things came to me about what I needed to do. What do you mean things? You know, uh, um, <clears throat> like, uh, I, I, I feel that there was something for me to do and everything was a gift from our uh, ancestors and stuff. So this was a gift. And I was always wondering why I was down there in my topping area, beach. And I didn't know how I got down there. I figured I drove down there because my truck was on, door was open, I was sleeping on the ground. And I don't remember getting into my truck, 
get, going down to Matapang and, uh, and fall asleep on the ground 10 feet away from my truck. Mm -hmm. I didn't remember none of that, <clears throat> mm. you know. And that was kind of telling me something, you know, what, what was going on. Famata, famata, famata. So, <clears throat> what came to my mind was, you know, I read newspapers where our ancestors, our, our, our government ain't doing nothing about artifacts. I was a teacher for a while. They weren't talking about our ancestors or how <clears throat> how we are in the past and everything. We never talked about the past. None of the archaeologists or the Guam Museum will go to school and talk about who we are and everything, mm -hmm. our ancestors. So what was the message? <clears throat> the message was for me to run in the jungle and stay there and have no obstacle, no nothing to deal with, with people. Those are, you know, obstacles that I have, I, I, I can't deal with. Mm -hmm. I felt all of that. Mm -hmm. So I ran to the jungle <clears throat> and everything, knowing what I needed to do. And what I needed to do was to cleanse myself. I lived in the jungle for four years and nine months. Four years and nine months? How That's did you right. survive? Uh, I had my own garden. I would live right next to the ocean. I went fishing and all that stuff. And, and you know, I got friends who would come down and visit me and everything. And they always asked me, a lot of my friends thinks I was crazy. Hmm. But I know why I was there for it. And everything. When I went to that jungle, I started seeing artifacts in front of me. And everything. And that was the message that I had to do. And everything. So I continued doing it for that four years. I've been still, I'm still doing it today. And everything. You think this is all the artifacts I got? That belongs to our, our, our Totomona people back then? Mm -hmm. No, I got quite a few more at home and everything. And a whole bit. But anyway, my ancestors, when I go in the jungle, I talk to them. Saina, Ogu ni Mangaigi ni Lalai Tano. You know? No, I do for any cautious mizu. The Wahugi fatta paranzo. I mean, you know, let me have your things and I'll show it for the people. Mm -hmm. For our people and everything. I go to the school. And I do presentation about our language and yeah. the artifacts of Guam. I didn't, never got paid to do these things, you know. And, and this is what they gave me. I go in the jungle, I ask permission. Asking is very important, you know. You just don't go and take things. We, we hear about people getting sick, yeah. you know, when they do something disrespectful to our, the jungle. Right. Like that. You know, don't and you don't sick. get a response though, right? You don't get a, a, a physical response from my ancestors when you ask permission. It's just no. kind of the respect you give. Then you have to give them that respect because it belongs to them. Yeah. Like if I came over there and, and took your watch off of you or, or whatever, right, you're right, going right. to get pissed off. You know, I believe that our ancestor spirit is still here lingering from the, during the Spaniard time when they were, their life wasn't fulfilled. They were killed and everything. Their spirit is still lingering here. As still as we speak, they are still here today. Matter of fact, they're in here right now, believe it or not. You know, and when I go in the jungle and everything, I hear them mumbling. I don't understand what they're saying. Yeah. I hear kids, you know, like playing or whatever they're doing, but it's the voice of a kid. I hear a footstep walking next to me. Yeah. I have people, I have them touch my shoulder. You felt something on your shoulder? Oh, sure. And, and you weren't no chills, no fears? Yeah, you know, it, it kind of spooked me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I take it as messages. Okay. You know? And, and when I hear them bumbling, I take it as messages and everything. I go home, uh, you know, they, they'll wake me up. I, I hear them calling me, you know, to go to, I've been to all the jungle here in the island, back mm -hmm. to jump north and everything, you know? Uh, my Matingan name was given to me by our Tautomona friends, you know. Uh, when I was going to the jungle all the time, I hear a whisper. Saying your name. Saying my name. Well, I didn't have Matingan name yet. They gave it to you. They gave it to me. For almost a year, I keep, when I go to the jungle, up north, Hilaan, Pagat, yeah. Arnum, Lahunia, you know, told um, I hear a whisper, very lightly. It took me, what, almost a year to realize that 
They were giving me the colony Matingan. So that's how I got my name, Matingan. Wow. You know, I, I, and, I, and I thank them for giving it to me and everything. So when I go in the jungle, Sanda Tata, I'm doing him and talk to my mother. You know, I said, Give him a thing on. No, no, I hear them calling me to go in the jungle and everything. And it's my choice to what jungle I have to go to. Yeah. But my luck, my luck, my luck. I hear that, you know, telepathically, I hear that. All of these artifacts you see in here, I know their names. I didn't read a book to know what they are. Yeah. They actually told me what they are. Wow. Its they use did. as well, yeah. how it was used, that's amazing. You know, you know, you know. How do you think you got this? I guess it sounds like you got a gift if you can yes, it was you can gift. communicate with them, if you can uh, articulate their message and, and walk out of the jungled areas where some people may be in fear because they might get sick or whatever but they might have yeah. heard. You get to have this relationship, this connection. The, yes, yes. I do have the connection and I feel that connection and everything. You know, uh, sometimes, you know, I spook myself. Yeah. When I go in the jungle picking up all of this artifact, you know, I, I, I've had friends, Sinahi, Sipagat, she, Aniti, those are tomorrow names that we call ourselves and everything. Where we can walk in the jungle and none of those three guys will find an artifact. The whole time I, you also have this friend. Oh, that's from the, uh, <laughs> the tree, yeah, I'm out here. But anyway, all the artifacts that you find, everything. I'll find the artifacts, but they don't have anything. They like show it to me. See it, mala, see it, see it, see it. You know, and I looked on it, just pass it, and 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 I said, I'm not saying I hear. Then I say, Papa, it's time to malofana wada tundi it. I'm not saying it. And plain as daylight, you can see it, but they don't see it. What about uh, our, our younger generation here in Guam? I mean, all they hear is, is the stories that would spook, spook them. them yeah. So what do yeah. you think they can learn just from your experience? Because you still get spooked yourself, but that's just kind of a human yeah. instinct. Yeah, you know, you know, you know what? Um, when you're there at that particular place at a particular time, um, you know, if, if our spirit world wants to show themselves, they will. You know, that's me speaking. Mm -hmm. You know, and they just don't happen to anybody. You know, well, uh, and it could happen to anybody. Yeah. You know, uh, you just there at the right time. You know, the kids don't be afraid of who to talk to money is. You know, I believe that there are good people and there are bad people. I believe that there are good totomona and bad totomona. You know, and when you're, you know, disrespectful from your parents or whatever, or you are in the jungle, and, and they want to show themselves or do something to you. You know, as I speak, there's, 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 there's certain sickness that our ancestors does. And there's not a maybe, you know, this is Sirianna, Sirianna can heal. Mm -hmm. But there's some times where they cannot heal the doings of our ancestors. As we speak today, you know, there's not a doctor in the world that can cure our doings of our ancestors. Yeah, they, I believe say, that. Oh yeah, sure. You know, I've seen my cousin, my uncle get sick by the Tautamana. And yet you go back mm -hmm. to the jungle where you did your disrespectful, whatever you did that was wrong, mm -hmm. and ask for forgiveness. And by the time you get home, or when you get home, whatever's wrong with you is gone. What do we say to that? That's our total mana doing. That's our total my healings that they that you did wrong, and they 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 are trying to remind you that hey, as to get you not move, you not yo, so disrespect total total. Instead of setting you back on that right path to respect, especially your elders and and just the land around us or yes. our home. Um, wow, what would you say to the non-believers? Well, to the non-believers, yeah, you know, what more can we say? You know, they haven't experienced it, but maybe one day they will experience it. Mm -hmm. You know, the non-believers, you know, it's okay. We, we, we have nothing against that, you know. But one day, they will be a believer. And I know people like that. Like the, uh, the banyan tree, the 
ton kununu. That's a total monetary. Yeah? Yeah. And, and, and a person that says, I'm not a believer of Tautomana, ah, balon is full of BS in back at them. And I said, Is that your Kununu Gato? Go find over there. Here's a machete, go find and cut and spit at it and pee at it. They said, I'm not here. No, I don't want to do that. So there, that shows that they That's, might believe. Yes, right. They buddy. might believe that. They, they, they do. They know why. They, that you don't want to do that. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to get sick. Yeah. And you're telling me you don't believe in the Tautomana. What about our younger ones, though? I, I remember. Hearing stories of like the Tatsumwana possessing certain items that our our uh, younger kids, uh, younger youth, may hold near and dear, and then they get sick. Yeah. Uh, how do you overcome something like that if you ever? Well, you know, the only thing you know, uh, the parents will you normally would take them to the Suriano, mm -hmm. is their kids. You know, I've I've seen many of that already. You know, kids are getting sick and they go to the Suriano and. And or the Suriana, and they, they cannot get get cured. Fever, or your legs get fat and pop, pop yeah, you know, or bruises, or bruises and things like that, you know. But yet you go back to that jungle, like I said earlier, and ask for forgiveness, yeah. and be gone. Yeah. No, you know, like I say, what do you say to that? You know. Uh, in, in, it's, it's, uh, you know, the parents will believe in it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some parents that don't believe in it. Go to the Sriana. You know what? I've had parents that come up here because they've heard about me, about my course, my things here. They talk to them on the things. <clears throat> and they'll ask me what they need to do to cure. My, my daughter yeah. is seeing things in, in his bedroom. What do you tell them? I tell them, say, you, uh, before the lim lim tau tau, the lim lim tau tau is before the sun drops. You take a candle and you light it. You and your daughter or your son that are seeing this tautomona and everything, because they see tautomona. Mm -hmm. the, the kids will tell them that they see a monster, they see, they see spirit, they see yeah. these things, you know? And we hear that. And, and, and I say, you take a candle, you light it right before the sun goes down. You light it. You hold your daughter's hand or your son's hand. Hold that thing. Take a candle and light it. All right. Uh, <clears throat> you as a parent, say the mother, not mm -hmm. the father, not the mother. Okay. All right. It has to be the mother because the mother created her and okay. him. You know what I'm saying? Give birth Got and all it. that and everything. And talk about chasing him away. So, you know, stop coming here. You're not invited. You know, uh, we're trying to give you the respect, but you don't give us no respect. So get away from here. We don't want you here. You know, you chase them away and everything. Firm. Yeah, you have to be. It's not a plaything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, bro? It's not a plaything. This is serious now. You're talking real things, you know? And that's what our Tautomona, you know, that's probably a Tautomona, a bad Tautomona, mm -hmm. or maybe a good Tautomona, you know? but. She's seen this thing, and you know, there's a lot of kids. Even today, as you at age and our age, can still see them. You know, go lian, lian means so seeing things. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> so when you light that candle and everything, it may take you thirty minutes to an hour to talk to whoever your daughter is seeing by chasing them away and everything. So you will get to feel to blow the candle out. But you as a parent, don't blow the candle out. Okay. And all this time, you gotta hold your daughter's hand, and when you get ready to blow the candle, you, you tell your daughter, let's blow the candle out. You pretend as a parent, as a mother, to blow the candle out, but let your daughter blow the candle out. That's important. It's important that she blows the candle out, oh. not the mother. All right, but all this time that you're talking to chase them away, you mm -hmm. gotta be holding your daughter's hand, you know, because if you're not, they can still take your daughter away from, you know, seeing whoever they seeing. So you gotta hold their hand, hand and everything, yeah, and a whole bit. And you know, about two months later, the lady came up here and told me, man, she came in, gave me a big hug and everything, and told me that. My daughter's not seeing all that stuff no more. And she's better. She's healed. Oh, yeah, she's healed. You know? 
I am not not saying Rayan or nothing like that. I didn't know what to do when they asked me. I've had other people ask me that, and I don't know what to do. So what I I have to do is hold their hand and 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 think about what I need to tell them. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to tell them. Mm -hmm. Like Gio Beneventi, I don't know if you know Gio Beneventi no. or Jury. Her husband went up to Retinian area to pick this what they call agitellum. It's like like that. That's kind of stick. Okay. Tell them you can get so straight and everything like that one up there. So he got sick. I guess he didn't ask permission to cut yeah. those things down. Yeah. And by the time he got home, he was he was like this. Ugh. Oh, we can't see you down there. <laughs> oh, so he was he was down on the over. Knees, you know. <clears throat> so Jill, five o'clock in the morning, gave me a call. <clears throat> Cause you know, Jill believe of what I'm doing here. Yeah. And everything and what I have position. She told me to, uh, uh, you know, what can you do? I said, Jill, I really don't know what to do. Honestly, you know. How did it end? Um, <clears throat> so I said, five o'clock in the morning. I told, told Jill, and I asked Jill, who, who you, who was Ed, your husband, was with that day? He goes, my two daughters. I said, okay. Make sure that when Ed gets here, she brings Tossie and Amber. They were just young kids, mm -hmm. and, and come to the house, pick me up. And so we, Ed came and the two daughters came and picked me up and went down to Retinian, who what we call uh, Lutexan. Mm -hmm. That's the Retinian, it's not the true name for it. It's called Lutexan. And I said, Ed, take me from to uh, that place where you cut your, 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 uh, mm -hmm. And he goes, okay. So we walked in and he was still on, practically on his knee walking in there. It took him almost like 30 minutes or better just to get to that place where he cut that tree. So I, I uh, asked Amber, let's all, all of us hold hands. I still didn't know what to do, you know? And um, we sat there for like 10 minutes and this, something came to me. What I needed to do. A message. Uh, yeah, it was a message. What I need to do. What was it? So I took the machete that Ed cut the tree down. So I went and I picked the tree and I cut it down. You know, all these leaves, the branches and everything. So I gave it to Ed. Ed, you clean this thing. You clean the tree, all the branches and everything, all the leaves, all the tail and mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So I went over there and I did three of them. Cut it, I'm the one who cut it. I gave it to Ed, gave him the machete, clean it. And Ed goes, why am I doing this? How come you're not doing it? I said, Ed, when Safi, Safi, you're, you're taking away the, the wrongdoing that you did by you cleaning it. Yeah. You're just like you're cleaning whatever's wrong with you. Because I know you're not You know, Safi, Ipinitimu. You know, when I saw Safi, Ipinitimu, we told him Safi, Safi, you know, you're chasing it away. Yeah, Safi, Ipinitimu. After the third one and everything, I said, okay. I told Amber the whole one tree that he cleaned and took Tashi to hold the other tree. That's already clean and everything. Mm -hmm. And I gave it one of the tree and everything. Tell us hold. how, tell us the, the end where, what happened after everything was done. Okay, I gave Ed the machete to the hole. Yeah. All right. We went out to the car and everything. Ed was still practically on his knees. Okay. And everything. So we drove and dropped me at home. It's okay, Ed. Yeah, and he was still hurting, sore, and everything. But when he got home, he was like, when we were walking, he, I can see, I can see that he was like, almost like coming up ready from it being so low, and yet he, he was like, just a little bit coming up wow. from it and everything. When he got home and everything, he was practically standing up straight. Jill called me up, crying yeah. and everything. And if you don't believe me, you go up to Jill Benevente <laughs> and ask him, what did Matingan do? What today? happened up there in the jungles, in yeah. the Texan? Wow. Uh, in every Texan. And, you know, <sighs> Jill was crying and everything, telling me, thank you. Ed actually drove all the way up to the house, yeah. gave me a hug, 
And everything telling me thank you. I say, don't tell me thank you. Tell the ancestors thank you. Yeah, because they, they don't forgave want you. you. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't know what to wow. do. You know, those are my experience and yeah. everything. Uh, and, and, you know, I hear them walking next to me. I hear them mumbling. Yeah. You know, they, they're making me see all these things. You know, I got to say some of the laddie stones, the lights. Mm. Still got quite a few laddie stones at home. This, I still got a lot of artifacts at home. You know, these, all of this were lost to our Totomona, the yeah. people before us. Mr. Segunza, yeah. thank you so much for sharing your experiences, the stories, and obviously there's power in knowing and being knowledgeable about our ancestors, yes. just for your protection, for the protection of our, yeah. our younger ones. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, you know how it is today. You know, a lot of young kids have no respect. Yeah. And you, you see that. So we got to teach them that. To we have continue to teach that. them that's that. Part, that's huh? part of our culture. It's part yeah. of our, should be part of the tradition you know, moving it's forward. It's like, you know, you're going to go pee back to the jungle, you ask permission. That's it. You know, it's just being respectful. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we hear those things. I yeah. see my cousin, my auntie, uncle get sick by the doctor morning. We all hear it. Well, Mr. Sugwaza, we're out of time, but thank you so yeah. much for okay, sharing. No problem. And we appreciate it. Sizos Masi. Agumas. Agumas. And. Of course, respect, very important, but it just is. knowing what to do. One of the most important do. things in the world is respecting one another. And respecting our ancestors. Thank yeah, you so much yeah. for joining us. Thank you to Mr. Seguenza for sharing his experiences, his knowledge of our Tatumwanas. This is another edition of Tatumwana Tales on the KVM Podcast Network. I'm Nick Delgado. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.